In this video, I'm going to have a look at installing VMware Workstation Pro on a Ubuntu host PC. And I'm going to set up a Windows guest virtual machine and a Ubuntu guest virtual machine. So the first thing we want to do is go to settings. And then we want to go to system and check the system details. So in order to virtualize Windows, we're going to need to exceed its system requirements. And we also need to run Ubuntu at the same time, so we need to exceed these by a fair bit. So you're going to want a high-end 11th generation Intel processor, so an i5 or an i7, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a 1 terabyte solid-state drive on your Ubuntu host PC. So in order to install VMware, um, we're going to need the following dependencies. So these are essentially C++ compilers um, that are re required in order for VMware workstation to run. So we're going to use the sudo apt install command. So sudo means super user do. So we're going to need to authenticate by inputting our password. And then we're going to use the advanced package tool and then we're going to install these dependencies. Next, we're going to download VMware Workstation. And VMware ha have recently been acquired by Broadcom. So the front end to the downloads is on the Broadcom website. But there's been some issues logging in. So what I'm going to do is instead use the back end and download the .bundle.tar file. So .tar essentially means it's an archive. So we can just right click this and select extract. Next, we want to go in and right click the .bundle file and select ex executable as program. Next, we want to change the permissions of this file and we want to change it to be executable. So we can just change the permissions and then the permissions we want is plus X and then we can drag and drop the, the file name. Next, we can just run this and we need to run this as a super user. So it will go ahead and install VMware Workstation. So now that v VMware Workstation is installed, it's going to display in the Start menu. So we can go ahead and launch it, accept a license agreement, optionally check for product updates, optionally join the customer experience program, and then we're prompted to authenticate the task um, to finalize the VMware Workstation setup. So now that we've got VMware Workstation set up, we can go ahead and download uh, Windows installation ISO. So let's just go to Microsoft's software downloads page and let's download Windows 11. And go ahead and download the installation ISO. So now that we've got the Windows 11 installation ISO, we can open up VMware Player and select File, create a new virtual machine, select Use ISO Image, and then select the Windows 11 ISO image. So it's going to detect that it's Windows 11 64-bit. So in the next screen, we're going to be prompted for a encryption password for the trusted platform module. And then we're going to be prompted to set up our virtual disk. So you may want to make this larger than 64 gigabytes if you're going to install a lot of programs and have a lot of files in your Windows 11 virtual machine. So once done, select finish. And you're probably going to get the following error. Um, this is because the virtual monitor kernel service is blocked by secure boot and the virtual network kernel service is also blocked by secure boot. 
So what we're going to do is create a machine owner key and we're going to add these two kernel services to it. So now we can use the machine owner key utility and then we're going to need to create a machine owner key password and put it again and now when we reboot our PC it's going to go into the machine owner key management within the device setup so we can enroll in this machine owner key and then input the password and then press enter and then reboot. So now um, VMware Workstation is installed and its kernel services will pass secure boot. So if we try and launch this virtual machine again, um, we're going to get some dialogues. So let's just select download and install to install VMware tools. And then we're going to need to input our password to authenticate, which essentially copies the VMware tools installation ISO to the expected location. So we need to restart the virtual machine and then click into it and then press any key such as H to, to boot. So I'll boot using the Windows 11 installation ISO. I'm just going to skip the product key and use Windows 11 unlicensed. Accept a license agreement and I'm going to install Windows 11 on the virtual disk and then select install. So it's going to install Windows 11. We can then select our language and our keyboard layout. So now it's going to check for updates and this will take a while. So input your PC name and then select set up for personal use and it's going to check for more updates and it will take a while to install these. So because we're connected to the internet, we're going to be strong armed into signing in with a Microsoft account. To get by this, let's go to virtual machine settings and disable the network adapters. Next, click into the virtual machine and press shift and F10 and type in OOBE. And then we want to type in slash bypass NRO. So we're going to bypass the network required option. Make sure you've got the correct slash here. So the virtual machine will reboot. And now if we continue the setup, we'll have the option, I don't have internet. And now we can create our local account and we can optionally set a password. Next we'll have the privacy options. and we'll see the final um, screens in the Windows 11 setup. So what we can do now is just go to virtual machine and virtual machine settings and re-enable our network adapter. So the Windows installation on the vir virtual machine, like a Windows installation on actual hardware, is going to require some system drivers and the system drivers for the virtual machine are included in VMware tools. So what we want to do is go ahead and install these. So what we're going to do is select virtual machine and select install VMware tools. This will mount the VMware tools ISO and we can go ahead and launch the setup 64 application and this will go ahead and install VMware tools which installs the Windows 11 guest system drivers. 
So notice that the display adapter has been installed and notice that the virtual machine is now full screen. Select finish and then allow the Windows 11 guest to restart. So installation of VMware tools also allows drag and drop. This in theory should work both ways, um, but only seems to work to the virtual machine. So let me just create a file. So let's just create this Python script um, called script.py. And what we can do is drag this from documents in the Ubuntu host to the Windows 11 virtual machine. So we can go ahead and just modify this file. And let's just give it a different file name. So notice that when I attempt to drag this, that we can see the file appears, but it's not dragged over. So notice to the left hand side, we've got this file icon. And essentially this file icon displays if we try and use the menu in, in the top. So we need to close down the virtual machine. And we need to select shut down, restart doesn't work and then this gets rid of that file. So what we can do is go to virtual machine settings and then options and then select shared folders. So we can create this folder within documents called the VM shared. And we can opt to map it as a network drive. So now if we open up Windows Explorer and go to computer, we see VM shared and we've got the script file. And we can copy this other script file, script2 across and access it in the Ubuntu host. So one other neat thing about VMware is that you can connect um, USB devices to it. So I'm going to connect this um, microscope to it and it displays as a camera. So if I open up the camera app and then allow the permissions, I can see this microscope. So the mic microscope's just pointing at my wooden desk. So I can go ahead and zoom in and here I can see the scratches on this wooden desk. So this microscope doesn't work well in, in Linux. Um, it's essentially recognized by the camera app, but doesn't display as a camera. So it's quite useful for me to use this in a Windows 11 virtual machine. And this configuration is quite useful when the user has one or two um, devices that don't have Linux drivers or, or software applications that only run on Windows. Let's download a Ubuntu installation ISO now. And what we're going to do is create a new virtual machine from this installation ISO. So Ubuntu is detected. So let's fill in the options to create our account. And one option I would recommend changing is the disk size. So I'm going to up it to 120 gigabytes. And then Ubuntu guest is going to boot using the Ubuntu live installation ISO. And we can use this to go ahead and install Ubuntu using the default options. So erase the virtual disk and install Ubuntu.
So in theory, this account page should automatically be populated because we provided these details um, to the, the virtual machine setup. It seems um, it's not passed these details through, so we need to input them again. So now what we're going to do is just go ahead and install. So after Ubuntu is installed, you're going to be prompted to restart. So select restart now. And in the case of Ubuntu, the open VMware tools are included in the Linux kernel. So this means you essentially have all the system drivers and you can resize the virtual machine. So now neither drag and drop to or from the virtual machine will work. So what we want to do is once again, go to virtual machine settings and we want to enable shared folders and let's just enable the same shared folder. So note that there's no option to map this as a network drive. So let's just go to documents and create this folder of VM shared. And next let's go to startup applications and select add. And we're going to create this startup application called VMware shared folder. And we're going to use the following command. Make sure you replace the following with the location of your VM shared within your Ubuntu guest virtual machine. So in this case, it's actually within documents. So once this is done and the Ubuntu guest has been restarted, Now, when we go to this documents folder and select the VM shared, known as it's a shared folder, and we can access the files from the, the host Ubuntu. And we can modify something in the guest Ubuntu and then view this in the, the host Ubuntu. Like in the case of Windows, we can connect USB um, devices. So if I go ahead and just insert this um, microscope, um, it's essentially a camera device. Um, so if we go ahead and install Cheese, we can see that the microscope is essentially recognized as a camera. But in this case, this microscope isn't fully recognized by Linux um, and therefore the camera displays a black screen. If you're using a device that's been certified to run in Linux and has a driver in the Linux kernel, um, it should just behave um, normally like it would in the Ubuntu host PC.